Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, we all know about this burning issue of the farmers' protest due to the introduction of new farmers' bill by the central government. So far, we have heard the opinions and perspectives of many people like doctors, bureaucrats, lawyers, and mostly netizens. But we haven't heard about the perspectives and opinions mostly from the farmers' side. So I decided to meet a person called Lakshmi Narsimha Kurti who was an ex software employee turned into a farmer due to his passion on agriculture so why this person this person has uh, achieved many things he was also awarded the youth for development award from the prime minister of india itself in the year 2018 so he resides in yazali uh, it's like about uh, 30 kilometers from guntur right now i'm going to guntur to meet mr lakshmi narsimha ikutti So guys, uh, I've reached Yazali, and right now I'm at uh, Yazali Farmers Producer Company, established by Lakshmi Narsimha Ikurti. Uh, before reaching here, I've done my part of uh, groundwork regarding the new farmers bill. But rather than putting up my perspective like many others did, I want to know the perspective of a farmer. So that's the reason we are meeting Mr. Lakshmi Narsimha Ikurti now. So let's don't make any delay and get right into the video. So here I am uh, with the man, Mr. Lakshmi Narsimha Ikurti, who has won the Best Farmer Award from Mr. Prime Minister of India itself in 2018. It's a pleasure meeting you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Jairal. Thanks for the good introduction. Uh, sir, uh, there are uh, the farmer protests going on in India right now. Yes. And uh, there is a lot of confusion going on between the people and. Uh, and many other organizations and misconceptions going on yes so yes. i have made a set of questions uh, for you so you could explain as a way regarding these bills yeah exactly. go ahead go ahead jaya so what exactly is the intention of the first bill the first bill means like is a commerce and trade bill yes sir yeah so you can treat this bill as a prolonging of that one nation one ga one tax like that okay. is going to be one nation one market that's the main major intention of the union government uh, uh, what i feel now with this bill farmer can sell their produce wherever they want in the nation uh, i think it's happening uh, even now too sir see the uh, thing is it's happening now but there is another market in the country which is running by the state government which is an apmc market Okay. This act came into the force in 1965. The farmers has to sell their produce in the APMC market itself. Mm -hmm. If at all they want to sell outside the APMC market, mm -hmm. and the buyer has to pay the market sales. Okay. Not the farmer. Buyer has to pay the market sales of one percent to nine percent. It varies from the state to state. Hmm. Matter of fact, the states like uh, Haryana and uh, Punjab, hmm. where uh, farmers are protesting now, hmm. the market sales there is it's uh, six to Eight percent, which is very huge, very huge. Okay. The problem is, government is collecting this market says, and they has to utilize this market says amount whatever they have collected for the development of agriculture. Whether it's happening or not, the state government has to answer. But what are the farmers in the other states are protesting over? Yes. See, the intention of the bill is to allow the farmer wherever he, he can sell his produce, but. The first and foremost question the state governments are raising is agriculture is in state affair. Okay. How central can take away from the states? They don't want the central to interfere between in the agriculture. Places. But union government is countering for this is that they are saying even though agriculture is a state affair, commerce and trade is central affair. Okay. So they are simplifying the task for the commerce and trade. That's how they are saying. And again, and villages like a few. uh farmer groups not few now as the entire india is in the misconception i feel farmers are protesting particularly from those uh, couple of states against the bills they want to scrap the bills yeah, these bills got implemented those two states will get benefited out of it for i feel because they are paying 8% market says 8% is very huge suppose the farmer is selling 10000 1000 uh, rupees was uh, cost of bag to the buyer the buyer is paying 8% out of it which is 80 rupees okay but the problem is like farmer is not realizing that market says is paying from his pocket itself because as a buyer if i want the market price is 1000 rupees i take it the produce and i can't bear that 80% uh, from my pocket right i will okay. reduce the cost of it so i will buy it for uh, 1920 mm. yeah. yeah that indirectly that 8% is putting on farmer okay. so that farmer has to realize 
and again the farmers are saying if this bill got implemented the apmc market will go away and msp this is a problem for them to get the msp and union government is counting saying that like there is no problem for the msp and the apmc market will continue like this and if at all the market price is not good definitely union government and state governments can procure for the msp of the that's what they are answering but my conception if, if you ask me my views on this bill i can say these bills may not uh, what you can say like answer for all the questions of all the issues of the agriculture but we have to move forward we have to allow the uh, corporates we have to allow everyone who is interested in the agriculture to let them come to the agriculture let them come to the farmers and buying it because uh, see there is a telangana chief minister cm ksr will say one thing so if one fellow from chintamadugu want to sell his uh, 20 paddy bags if he goes to delhi with these bags to sell yeah he so let's scrap this bill like that he is saying yeah but but i can definitely say that fellow can't go that farmer from chintamadugu may not go to the delhi okay but the buyer from delhi can definitely come to the chintamadugu to buy this pot okay that's how this bill provides a provision yes yes so previously if the buyer want to purchase the produce from the farmer he has to have the trade license from the corresponding apmc market but now this bill says this give give the feasibility gst is enough okay even local buyers and okay. even local small small traders and processors and millers can buy it from directly from the farmers okay so this part of the bill uh, freezes uh, even the buyers as well as the farmers exactly, exactly. so the cess is removed yes as well as the trade license is removed and yes. the gst is enough and a farmer can go to any place and a buyer can come from any exactly. place exactly exactly so it's a kind of a benefit actually yes, benefit. and uh, Okay, let's go to the second part. Then, what is the second part in the bill? Second part means the second bill. Yeah, second bill, second bill. Yeah, second bill. I can say like this one. Uh, you can directly call this bill as a contract farming. Okay. Yeah, contract farming in sense like uh, bill says the investor. You can say like a corporate or whoever. They can uh, directly go for the agreement with the farmer. Mm-hmm. And for the price, so for equipment standards, they can go to for the uh, what you can say agreement with the farmer. and they can have work with the farmer they can give the uh, what you can say like uh, investments and for his inputs and all and you can procure the produce back with the same price previously also it's happening but those t- that time uh, this contract farming is not even the, uh, what you can say like uh, legality now the government has introduced this and with this what i can say like like uh, what the intention of this bill is if at all something happen now just now like uh, one week back we have uh, nivar cyclone yeah. majority of the crops major almost 90% of the crops fall down okay. so farmers are huge loss because they only spare the money if, if this bill is introduced mm. investor will put on the money in investment on this crop product mm. production so if at all those things happen investor will take care of the insurance okay. the farmer will loss only his uh, physical strain and physical work hmm. that's what i feel uh, okay. here in this bill they provided one more facility if at all the market price got increased when produce came into the picture okay so farmer can demand that produce the market price so what the farmer increased? has the opportunity to demand the yes, price yes yes so in this bill the why 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 state down i mean exactly that, other that's my question farmers are opposing this bill they will say like if at all this will happen so entire uh, agriculture will go to the corporates one thing they say and second thing they are saying uh, whatever uh, the agreement they are putting majority of the farmers in india are illiterate so yeah, they will keep some uh, what you can say like uh, uh, they will prepare the agreement for their favor and they can put in it it may cause a problem to the farmers one thing and yeah, second thing yeah and that's a problem right if at all any issue happened between the farmer and the investor issue can be solved at the revenue division one which is like uh, mandal revenue office okay there is a first appellate office both the parties can solve the issue within a month okay. it is not getting solved there uh, again division level uh, revenue officer can do it at the way and if it is not uh, solving it there there is a third appellate which is uh, with the district magistrate and district collector these issues can be solved up to the three levels okay so but this uh, this bill is not allowing farmer to go to the court yeah so now the farmer groups is asking the fa- just allow the farmers to go to the court to get the solution but mm-hmm. union government is saying answer for this is mm-hmm. if either party want to go to the court getting the solution for this is going to be huge time yeah 
Yeah. Definitely buses will get close uh, what you can say like yeah. because the produce they're selling at this market rate they will lose. So that is why the reason to to get the fast track uh, solutions for the issues they have prepared this average they are saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I know about commodities but what is this uh, essential commodities particularly means in this third one? Essential commodities is like the few commodities which is required in the day and day one life for consumption, day to day life for the government, which is like example is particular, okay, perfect example is onion. Okay. Onion is there in essential commodities previously. Yep. Now they removed the onion from the essential commodities. Okay. So why they say, what, what, what this uh, protesters, because this bill is not going to make much difference in farmer's life as well as consumer life and the middleman is going to get much benefit out of it. This is the talk of uh, uh, these protesters, he said. Exactly. Yeah. But I'll speak about the reality. Onion is there in the essential, essential commodity, commodity till now. Still now. But what's the prices of the onion, if you observe? Yeah, it's from more than 2 rupees to 200 also it will be sometime. How much difference is there? How much uh, fluctuations is there in the onion price? Yeah, nearly 100% increase. Yes. Onion is there in the essential commodity. Essential commodities means no one should store the onion okay. without government permissions and government exactly. won't give the permission to anybody. Exactly. But few influences, hmm. local politicians you can say, hmm. or politically influenced investors you can say. Okay. They are storing it now already, right? Okay. They are making it market uh, fluctuated like this. This bill allows everyone can store. They remove the onion from the essential, essential commodities. commodities. Now everyone can store. As a farmer can store. As a farmer producer organization, I can store. Mm-hmm. If you have money, you also can store. Everyone will store. But definitely, this much fluctuations may not come. That's what I feel. Okay, so that uh, there is, there will be no storage of such essential commodities, and uh, that commodities will be available to the public, and uh, the buyer and uh, selling exchanges yes. will be more, yes. and the prices will come down. Yes, prices may not fluctuate like this. May not exactly. go like this. Doesn't may not go over the roof. Yes. The buyer can yes. uh, like. Yes. Uh, the public can uh, yes. buy at a yes. better yes. price and the farmer can sell at a better price. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Here, the three bills seems to be very good, right? Yeah, because the thing is, uh, in India, not only in India, wherever you want, there is this uh, saying also, the path to the hell paved with the good intentions. Okay. What I feel is, all the bills will come with the good intentions only. The implementation only the matters. Okay. So, I, as, as, an agric- as a farmer, I feel, this should bill should get implemented as per the intentions of the bill policy makers and it should help the farmers to move forward. Okay, that's the reason uh, I came uh, to see the perspective of a farmer rather than uh, working on the bill by myself. Mm-hmm. Like uh, many people have uh, told and explained about the bill in various manners but uh, not most of them uh, took the opinions or perspectives of farmers. So, according to a farmer's perspective, I can understand this bill is very useful, but the bill should be implemented in that way which the bill has been prepared. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yes. Uh, I think uh, even uh, you have heard about uh, the implementation, right? Yes. Not about the bill. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, the bill is very good actually, mm-hmm. but uh, we had we feared about this implementation. Mr. Nasimhagaru. After listening about all this information and explanation from you, I had uh, my basics uh, to build up my opinion and perspective about this new farmer bill. So, I have a very simple question and a final question to conclude this topic. Okay. What is the future of Indian agriculture? Actually, I am the dreamer. If you see, in 1991 when our Prime Minister P.V. Nasima Rao has come up with the economic reforms, this type of hesitation happened. The time politicians and opposition parties are uh, made the like, all farmers are going to lose their lives because of the international investment investors will come, FDS will come, farmers will lose their land like that and they protested and they made sure agriculture is exempted from the bill. What I feel personally is we are facing that issues, we are facing that exemption even now. As a dreamer, I dream about this space, I feel about this space. The village where I born and where I'm living now, the youngster of my village should go to Europe only for exposure. That's a good Thank plan you. and that's a good thing. And actually. I welcome these bills. I hope these bills will change farmers' lives to some extent. Thank you.
thank you mr nasima garu it's a pleasure meeting you and uh, and hope uh, you guys uh, get a very clear idea and perspective about uh, the new farmers bill it helps you to build your own opinions so i feel uh, you must uh, put your opinions in the comment section below and if you find this video informative please do share the video and also please do like and subscribe to my channel so that i can make some more interesting content and come with much more uh, exclusive content so this is jairaj gedla signing off